Simon Jones here from HitFilm. Star Wars is out on Blu-ray at last, so we thought we'd better do some kind of cool tutorial. Because we've already done lightsabers, I'm going to focus on making Force Lightning. So I wanted to shoot some new material, but as we've only just shot two new short films, the accountant took a look at the books and said... No! Instead, we're going to take a shot from an old tutorial that we made with one of our older products and show you how you can do it much better in HitFilm. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the lightning, but let's take a quick breakdown of the shot. You can download the entire project file and the media from hitfilm.com forward slash files forward slash ultimate power dot zip. So grab that, open it up in HitFilm so you can see what I'm talking about. Back in the original short film, these images were flat background plates, because our older software only composited in 2D. With the power of HitFilm, there was an opportunity to do something more interesting. I used this hanger as the background, as it's a nice big view with lots of depth. I then took the walkway from this other image and gave it some forced perspective using a quad warp. Once the camera was animated, there was a nice sense of depth and geometry to the scene, even though it's based on a couple of still images. For the purposes of this shot, it's exactly what I needed. Although if we were starting completely from scratch, you could create the camera move properly in 3ds Max or your 3D app of choice. Next up we have our green screen shot of the actors. A colour difference key wiped out the green screen easily enough, then I tidied it up with the spill removal and matte cleaner effects. Colour correction rules were used to match it to the background. We'll have a tutorial going into more detail on green screen compositing in the near future, so stay tuned. The lightsaber was made using the technique we covered in an earlier tutorial, then composited in. Then we get to the good stuff. The lightning was made up of multiple effects. First, there's the two thick lightning effects. Thinner strands were then added for detail. Finally, a larger lightning effect was added to look like it was being deflected by the lightsaber. A zoom blur was used to make it look more like the force lightning from the films. Multiple light flares were then added to the hands and the impact points on the lightsaber. A bit of grading and camera shake later, and the shot was finished. Like I say, download the project file and take a look for yourself. This tutorial is going to focus on the lightning. Open up the project file, then open the lightning tutorial composite shot. This is a simplified version of the shot with most of the layers grouped into a single comp. The first thing to do is track a few points. Currently this is done manually, but a free update coming later in 2011 will add proper 2D point tracking to HitFilm, which will make this kind of thing much faster and easier. From the new layer menu, add a point. Before we start animating, it's important to expand its transform properties and turn keyframing on for the position property, otherwise HitFilm won't remember anything that you do. For this point, I'll position it over the Sith's left hand. It doesn't have to be super accurate for this effect. Let's jump forwards 10 frames by holding Shift and pressing the period key, or the full stop key if you're properly British like me, and reposition the point. I tend to start loosely with animation, keyframing every 10 frames or so like this, then filling in the gaps where more keyframes are needed. Once done, it looks a bit like this. I'll rename this point by hitting F2 and then typing left hand. We also need three additional points animated in the same way to line up with the right hand as well as two spots on the lightsaber. It doesn't really matter where exactly on the lightsaber. Once all four points are tracked, you should have something that looks a bit like this. Okay, it's lightning time. So, first, we'll go to the new layer menu and create a new black plane. This is the layer which will hold the lightning effects. In the effects panel, search for lightning and drag it onto the plane. In the controls panel, go to the plane's layer properties and change its blend mode to screen. This will remove the black so that you can see the lightning against the background. We're now going to make use of those points that we animated earlier. Open up the lightning and electricity effect and expand the start properties. Under use layer, select left hand. This will assign the lightning start point to the left hand point. You should also set the point value to 0, 0 so that there's no offset. Under the end properties, we want to do the same thing but set it to one of the points we created on the lightsaber blade. We now don't need to worry anymore about the positioning of the lightning. The default lightning isn't quite right for force lightning, so let's tweak some of the settings. Lightning in hit film is made up of three distinct elements. Trunks, branches, and twigs. Trunks spawn branches, and branches spawn twigs. Now, you might be thinking, hey, why are you using tree metaphors to describe lightning? Well, trees are known for being hit by lightning, so... We'll start by increasing the number of trunks to three, which makes for a much more interesting burst of energy from its hands. The wave and twitch settings control the general behaviour of the lightning. Wave adjusts how wild the movement is, while twitch changes the detail in the line itself. We'll go for about 0.6 on the wave scale, because we want nice wide undulating lightning, but drop the twitch to about 0.1, 
so that the individual trunks aren't too wiggly. The start and end width properties default to a large initial width, which then tapers away to nothing. We'll change this to 0.75 for the start width and 1.95 for the end width, so that it actually gets larger by the end point. In the branches property, we're actually going to drop the quantity down to zero. For this particular effect, branches don't really work. If we were making an actual lightning bolt, we'd want to keep these. Dropping branches to zero also means that we don't have to think about twigs, because twigs can only exist if there are some branches. We want a strong glow, so selecting a slightly lighter blue colour from the palette will work nicely. Raising the opacity to 0.88 makes the glow more visible. I'll also change the radius to 0.39 and the feather up to 1. Finally, in the animation properties, let's change the jitter. The jitter property determines how regularly the lightning branch regenerates itself into a new position. A low jitter will have a single continuously undulating branch, while a high jitter will create jumping, unpredictable branches. We'll raise it up to about 1.4. Now that one hand is done, we can select the complete lightning effect and then press Ctrl D to duplicate it. We'll rename both of these lightning effects so that we know which is which. In the duplicate start and end properties, we can now change the selected layers to the right hand and the second lightsaber point. To make sure that the duplicate looks sufficiently different, let's also change the seed value. This number is used to generate the base shape of the lightning, so changing it ensures that the two lightning effects will never look exactly the same. The lightning looks a bit too uniform at the moment. Let's duplicate that first effect again, then go into its properties and change its seed. The start width I'll now drop all the way down to 0.05 and the end width to 0.15. This makes for a much thinner lightning effect. Although they're two completely separate effects, because they share almost identical settings, they work together and look like a single visual effect. I'll do the same for the lightning coming out of the other hand. Finally, I'll add one more duplicated lightning effect. For this, I'll set the start layer to none and manually move the start point out of frame. We'll change the end point to the other point on the lightsaber. This then looks like the lightning is being deflected off the lightsaber and out of frame. It's all looking a bit crisp and computer generated at the moment, whereas the force lightning in Star Wars tends to have quite a wispy look. To do that, let's add a zoom blur from the effects panel. If we position the zoom origin off to the side, and increase the strength, it makes the lightning look more violent and magical. Currently the lightning is appearing rather out of nowhere, so let's add on some light flares from the effects panel to fix that. The default flare type isn't quite right, so let's change it to the flashlight LED. This is where it becomes clear how useful points are, as we can now go into the hotspot position properties and set the layer to left hand, to have it perfectly keep track with the start point of the lightning. You'll need to change the center property to 0, 0, so that there's no offset. By default it's a little bit small, so in the hotspot properties let's increase the scale to 3.3. .3. As with the lightning, we can now duplicate this effect by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D, then change the hotspot position to the right hand point. Easy. The same technique can be used to quickly add flares to the points where the lightning hits the lightsaber. The whole frame is slightly blown out now, so let's change the blend mode of the lightning from add to screen, which will prevent it from intensifying quite so extremely. I'll also reduce the scale of the flares on the lightsaber. Finally, a flicker effect added after all the lightning and light flares is an easy way to add a bit of unpredictable flickering to the effect. This again helps it to look less computer generated. Hopefully this told you everything you need to know to create your own force lightning. Any questions, just let us know on Twitter, Facebook or the hitfilm.com forums. You can find lots more tutorials and other cool stuff on the HitFilm YouTube channel, so please do think about subscribing. I'm Simon Jones, and I'll see you next time.